Hey everyone, today let's explore the lesser known but impactful story of Keturah and her descendants from the book of Genesis. While often overlooked, their legacy continues to shape our world today. From historical contributions to modern day cultural influences, we'll explore how their nomadic lifestyle and spiritual heritage continue to shape our world. The book of Genesis recounts Abraham's marriage to another woman named Keturah following the death of his wife, Sarah. This event is documented in Genesis chapter 25, verse one, where it states that Abraham took another wife, Keturah. However, there has been ongoing debate among scholars and commentators regarding the identity of Keturah and whether she is the same person as Hagar or a distinct individual. While the Bible doesn't explicitly specify Keturah's background or origins, it does offer detailed information about Abraham's other wives, including Sarah and Hagar. Sarah, Abraham's first wife and the mother of Isaac, is a prominent figure in Genesis, as is Hagar, who bore Abraham's son Ishmael. However, Keturah is mentioned relatively briefly in comparison, leaving her identity and relationship to Abraham somewhat ambiguous. Some commentators suggest that Keturah may have been another name for Hagar, based on linguistic and contextual similarities in the biblical narrative. Others argue that Keturah was a different woman altogether, possibly a wife Abraham took later in life, or even after Sarah's death. Abraham's decision to marry Keturah after Sarah's passing has indeed been the subject of diverse interpretations among scholars and theologians. Some view Abraham's union with Keturah as a fulfillment of God's promise to make him the father of many nations. After Sarah's passing, Abraham might have seen it as his duty to continue building his family as part of God's plan. Another interpretation suggests that Abraham sought sons who embodied the qualities of Ishmael, his son from Hagar. Ishmael was born out of Abraham's attempt to fulfill God's promise of progeny, and despite the complications that arose from his birth, Ishmael was acknowledged and blessed by God. Abraham may have desired to have more sons like Ishmael, strong, resourceful, and capable of thriving in a nomadic lifestyle. Alternatively, in the context of the ancient Near East, having multiple wives and concubines was a cultural norm. Abraham's actions may have been influenced by these customs rather than solely by divine instruction. From this perspective, his marriages to Keturah could have been pragmatic, forming alliances with different groups or tribes, thereby strengthening his position and influence. The book of Genesis provides little direct information about Keturah, but it does mention that she bore Abraham six sons. Genesis chapter 25, verses 1 to 2 NIV. Abraham had taken another wife whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. While the Bible doesn't elaborate on Keturah's origins or background, it does provide insights into the activities and descendants of her children. Each name of Keturah's sons bears significance, marking a new chapter in the patriarchal lineage. Number one, Zimran. Zimran, the eldest, his name resonating with strength and might, embodies the responsibilities and expectations inherent in primogeniture. While the biblical account offers little insight into Zimran's story, his position as the firstborn imbues him with significance in ancient familial structures. Number two, Jokshan. Jokshan, the second son, carries a name suggestive of skill or strategy, hinting at a clever or agile nature. In a time where names held deeper meanings, Jokshan's moniker likely influenced his life's path, guiding him through strategic endeavors. Number three, Medan. Medan, the third son, embodies strife or contention, indicative of significant challenges he may have faced. Yet, within biblical narratives, struggles often pave the path to spiritual growth and familial legacy. 
Number four, Midian. Midian, the fourth son, emerges as a pivotal figure, becoming the patriarch of the Midianite people. His legacy intertwines with key biblical narratives, offering refuge to Moses and later engaging with figures like Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. The Midianites' influence spans various historical and cultural contexts, shaping the Old Testament's broader tapestry. Number 5. Ishbak. Ishbak, the fifth son, his name hinting at a life filled with uncertainties or perhaps abundance, adds a layer of mystery to the family's lineage. Though details about Ishbak are sparse in biblical accounts, his presence contributes to the rich tapestry of Keturah's descendants. Number 6. Shuar. Shuar, the youngest, brings forth the promise of wealth and abundance, symbolizing prosperity within Keturah's lineage. While his narrative remains relatively unexplored, themes of blessings and abundance likely accompany his story. However, Midian, one of Keturah's sons emerges prominently in biblical narratives, becoming the patriarch of the Midianite people, a nomadic tribe dwelling in the wilderness. Throughout various biblical accounts, the Midianites, as descendants of Keturah, play pivotal roles. When Moses flees Egypt seeking refuge, it is among the Midianites that he finds solace. In Midian, Moses encounters Jethro, a priest and descendant of Keturah, who eventually becomes his father-in-law. This familial tie intertwines the destinies of Moses and the Midianites, shaping their shared narrative. The Midianites feature prominently in the Book of Judges, where their interactions with the Israelites underscore complex spiritual and cultural dynamics. Gideon, a judge of Israel, leads a military campaign against the Midianites, highlighting the recurring conflict between these two peoples. This struggle reflects broader themes of spiritual challenge and redemption woven throughout the biblical text. The influence of Midianite practices permeates biblical narratives, serving as a poignant reminder of the Israelites' spiritual journey and the challenges they faced. Through their encounters with figures like Moses and Gideon, the Midianites leave an indelible mark on the biblical landscape, enriching its depth and complexity. The territory associated with Midian is generally understood to encompass parts of modern-day Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and possibly even further into the Arabian Peninsula. Midian's geographical location placed it at a crossroads of trade routes facilitating commerce and cultural exchange with neighboring regions. However, the children of Keturah were sent away by Abraham while he was still alive. He gave gifts to them, indicating a separation from his son Isaac, and they were sent to the land of the east. Genesis chapter 25, verse 6, NIV. But while he was still living, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. This event is significant in understanding the subsequent actions and interactions of Keturah's descendants. Some interpretations suggest that Abraham's actions, such as giving gifts to the sons of his concubines and sending them away during his lifetime, were strategic moves to ensure Isaac's inheritance and prevent conflicts among his heirs. By establishing clear boundaries and provisions for his descendants, Abraham aimed to secure his legacy and maintain harmony within his family. The sons of Keturah, including Midian, joined forces with their brother Ishmael, forming a cohesive unit. Midian in particular played a notable role in the history of the region, eventually intertwining with the descendants of Ishmael to become one nation. This fusion of lineages led to Keturah's sons adopting a lifestyle similar to that of Ishmael, characterized by a nomadic existence in the desert. The association between Keturah's descendants and the Ishmaelites is evident in various biblical narratives. They were among the few, apart from Israel, who were required to undergo circumcision 
signifying their connection to the Abrahamic covenant. This shared heritage and lifestyle bound them together as a distinct group. During Gideon's time, the Midianites clashed with Israel. Gideon's ability to understand their language suggests a linguistic and perhaps cultural similarity between the two groups. This connection to Israel's history and holiness further underscores the significance of Keturah's descendants in biblical narratives. The tribal life of the desert, characterized by wandering and transience, shaped the identity and fate of Keturah's sons. The nomadic lifestyle of the descendants of Keturah is depicted as akin to that of Abraham, emphasizing their connection to his legacy and their shared heritage. Like Abraham, they are portrayed as wanderers, moving through the desert and engaging in trade and commerce as they journey. The involvement of Keturah's descendants in international trade suggests a level of economic activity and interaction with surrounding nations. They likely traded goods such as spices, textiles and other commodities, contributing to the prosperity and cultural exchange in the region. Abraham's nomadic lifestyle and the subsequent choices made by his descendants, including the sons of Keturah, were indeed emblematic of a preference for freedom and independence over material possessions and settled urban life. This lifestyle choice not only mirrored Abraham's own wanderings, but also emphasized their connection to his legacy and vision for his people. Abraham's nomadic lifestyle wasn't just a matter of wandering aimlessly. It was deeply tied to his spiritual beliefs and his understanding of his divine calling. He traversed borders and journeyed through different countries because he believed it was part of his purpose, guided by his faith in God's promises. This wandering lifestyle became a defining characteristic not only for Abraham, but also for his descendants, including the sons of Keturah. They chose to embrace this way of life because they didn't want to be tied down to building a specific nation or enslaved to material possessions associated with settled urban life. For them, freedom and independence were paramount. Their choice to prioritize freedom over material possessions spoke to a broader ethos within Abraham's lineage, one that valued spiritual fulfillment and autonomy above earthly wealth or power. This legacy of wandering and independence served as a foundational aspect of their identity, connecting them back to Abraham's original journey and his vision for a diverse and spiritually vibrant people. The sons of Keturah preferred the simplicity and freedom of nomadic living. They saw settled city life as potentially enslaving, leading to a dependence on materialism and possessions. By living freely in the wilderness, they sought to preserve their independence and spiritual connection. The ideological differences between Abraham's descendants, particularly the Midianites and the Israelites, highlight the divergent paths they chose to follow. While the Midianites, descended from Keturah, embraced a nomadic lifestyle akin to Abraham's, the Israelites settled in cities and cultivated the land. This fundamental disagreement led to conflict, with the Midianites viewing themselves as the true heirs of Abraham's legacy of freedom and independence. Abraham's death at the age of 175, as recorded in the Bible, marked the end of his remarkable life and legacy. According to the scriptures, his burial was attended by his sons Isaac and Ishmael, signifying a gathering of his descendants to pay their final respects. The absence of Keturah's sons at Abraham's burial raises questions about their whereabouts and whether they were aware of their father's passing. It's possible that they were living in distant locations at the time and did not receive news of Abraham's death in time to attend the funeral. Alternatively, they may have chosen not to attend for reasons not specified in the scriptures. 
While the Bible does not explicitly mention whether the sons of Keturah eventually came to pay their respects to Abraham after his burial, it's conceivable that they may have done so at a later time. Thus, Keturah and her descendants may seem like minor figures in biblical history, but their legacy resonates through time. Their nomadic lifestyle, cultural contributions and spiritual significance continue to influence our world today, serving as a reminder of the enduring impact of ancient narratives on contemporary society. And that concludes today's episode. We sincerely appreciate your presence. If you enjoyed our content, please consider hitting the like button, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for your support.